ahead, let's bring in our panel. Steve Hilton is a former advisor to British Prime Minister David Cameron, host of The Next Revolution here on Fox News Channel. Mara Lyson, national political correspondent for National Public Radio, and Matthew Continetti, editor-in-chief of the Washington Free Beacon. Uh, Mara, we, we've seen so many of these. There is uh, something of a numbness when you hear that it happens, but then when you're hit by the number, yeah. uh, it's, it's just shocking. Oh, when you're hit by the number, when you listen to those kids talk about what they saw, I have a middle schooler and a high schooler, it's horrendous. There apparently have been 12 school shootings in 2018 so far. We've had 45 days of 2018, not necessarily this, with this kind of fatality level. But yeah, this happens too much. Yeah. Getting to stopping this, Steve, is, mm -hmm. is really... A conundrum. It doesn't happen in Great Britain at the frequency it happens here. It doesn't happen, I mean, it happens, but it doesn't happen here uh, in these numbers. I, you heard Senator Nelson, Senator Rubio, wait for the facts, see what the deal is here. Uh, but there is a hunger to try to figure out how we as a country are going to tackle this. There, there is, and, and exactly as Mara was saying, it is just really, really hard to take. Particularly, I mean, no child should have to see things like that and have to recount them in the way we just heard. Um, and of course, er, there's a natural human reaction, which is to say there must be something we can do. There must be some wand of policy of some kind that we can wave and, and make this not happen. I actually don't think, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the British perspective for me is that having been here now six years in, in, in America and lived here and understood things I didn't understand when I lived in, in the UK, yes, it's true that that in countries like the UK, they look at this and say, what is the matter with them? Why does this keep happening? Why can't they sort it out? Now that I'm here, I just understand it's not as simple as that. There's a different heritage and a culture and a history here that means that some of the solutions that may seem obvious in other countries are just not obvious here. Um, I think it's also important to point out that when we see something like this, it obviously focuses all, all our attention, these mass shootings, but most of the people that die from gun violence in America don't die in these situations. They die in, in, in ones that never get attention. And I just think that the, the idea that there's a simple solution is just, is just not true. Yeah. I mean, for example, the, the numbers out of Chicago day to day are, are staggering. You know, we cover them here. But in this situation, these mass school shootings, it does not appear that this guy has a terrorist tie. We don't know. But he's an expelled for disciplinary action. Uh, seemed like a troubled student who was talking about guns and bombs before. You know, it struck me he was born in 1998, just a few months before Columbine really kind of inaugurated this historical epoch of the school shooting as being a major media event. And now we're coming up on almost on the 20th anniversary of Columbine in 1999. It's been a generation. And so you see all the preparation that goes in to uh, not only uh, the authorities, but I think almost the students. The way they were describing their experience, some were clearly emotionally rattled. Others, though, were describing it because they're you kind of used to the procedures. It's become kind of just a way of life, which um, I don't think anyone counted on when Columbine happened. Another X factor is the social media, right? So when the Columbine happened, it was we had cable news, we had 24-hour coverage. Now, though, we have real-time accounts from the students themselves. Now, on the one hand, that gives us a perspective about what's happening. On the other, however, it means sometimes misinformation and rumor can get involved as well. So we're living with in this era, but uh, there have been new changes, I think, uh, that make it all the more kind of visceral to us. Yeah. Listen, our, our job is to cover. We're, we don't want to make this guy a star, uh, but this is a major event in, in U.S. Uh, news at this moment and, frankly, this, this year. And, Mara, what do you think... You know, as we do this every time, what do you think comes out of this? I think, I don't, well, we have certainly learned not to predict that any kind of legislation solution is going to come out of this. If it didn't come out of Newtown, where, you know, several dozen or uh, little teeny kids were gunned down, it's not going to come out of this. However, I don't think there's a simple solution, but I think there are some things you could do to make these less frequent. Um, to make gun deaths in general less frequent, why do people on the terrorist watch list are still allowed to buy guns? For instance, isn't there a better system for flagging mental health problems 
I don't know what it would be, but it seems like there are some things, some simple things, maybe not a simple wave a magic wand to get rid of all of them, but this shouldn't happen this mm -hmm. often, period. I don't care if we live in a country that has a strong, proud heritage of owning firearms. This shouldn't happen this often. Well, that we can say definitively. Yeah. I mean, it just and there are, must be ways but, that we could make it happen less frequently. But why? Why have we not figured it out? I, I, I'm just back to your point. There are, there are 535 lawmakers behind me in that building. I mean, we've had a lot of time over the years. Why do you think, I mean, it doesn't have to be a sole gun policy issue, does it? I mean, couldn't it be a mental health issue? Couldn't I think it's it be more than, yeah, I, I, when, when we have these discussions after these horrific events, the, that, that phrase comes up a lot, mental health. I think we need to go deeper than that because there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a sense of social breakdown, not just in America. I don't want to make it American that you see it in, in countries. We saw it in the UK when I worked in government there. And it was one of the things that we tried to address. And it comes back to things like the disintegration of the family, children growing up without, in, not in stable, loving homes, that, as we would want to see. Um, there are all the other issues that we deal with um, in uh, piecemeal, but I think they go back to that notion of stability in the family home, and that is something that government can help address, and I don't see any sign of of, of that, the kind of focus we need on helping make sure that every child in this country grows up in a stable, loving home. Yeah. That certainly would help with this. In the short term, tonight, um, we all grieve for 17 families who will not have their kids coming home. Or we don't know if they're all kids or teachers and kids, but 17 families will not have loved ones uh, coming home tonight, and that is stunning. You know, and one of the other things we have seen after these events, if you really plot legislation that's been passed on the state level and elsewhere, what happens is gun laws get loosened. It gets easier to buy guns, easier to carry them openly. The argument that's, is, that's is that if, the if, there was a, if there was a gun and a security officer right. with a right. gun, Good he could have stopped. Gun, bad guy with a gun. But right. I mean, it's, a, it's an argument. Yes, but those are the kinds of legislation that's been passed. Why? One of the reasons, and you can't just ignore this, is there's an extremely powerful lobby in this country that doesn't want any of these laws passed. A lobby that's very effective at electing yep. representatives to the yeah. building behind yeah, you. Yeah, one of the most one effective of, lobbies one of the paradox. in American history. Well, mainly because it enjoys public support. Yeah. And so one of the paradoxes of this Columbine era is that even as we see these highly, um, uh, you know, uh, noted uh, and sensational and mass events that are horrifying, the politics of gun control have actually shifted right over the last yeah. 20 years. If anything, yeah. they've gone further. Right. And, That's so, what we're saying. and so how, how one reason. addresses this situation is, uh, is a mystery. And not, it's, not, it's not just gun control, it's also privacy concerns. The sheriff mentioned, uh, you know, say, see something, say something. Look at the social media. Well, there I'm sure that our wizards of Silicon Valley eventually will develop a program that will be able to peel through social media and kind of determine who is most likely to commit and crimes such what? as this. Then we run into privacy, privacy concerns exactly. from con people who say this is Big Brother who is looking right. into my life. The rights-based culture of the United States really kind of makes it hard for us to address these problems politically. But, you know, there was a time when certain kinds of semi-automatic weapons were banned in this country, and that ban expired. And it's been impossible to reinstate it. None of these shootings would have the number of fatalities. Some people would be killed. Now, hold on. Not Let's as just many. be yeah. clear that we stay to what we know. Yeah. On this shooting, he had we an AR-15. Yes, we don't know we about don't know this We don't know where shooting. he got Absolutely. the gun. We don't know. Right. And, you know, there were people that say if he didn't have the gun, he would have a bomb. And right. he would plant well, the bomb. And are we going to have We haven't had a lot of school bombings. Right. right. <laughs> no, but I, I, you know shooting. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not but, talking about this particular instance, but there was a time when we banned assault weapons. Right. Last word on this, Steve. I think that um, there is something that can be done, but it has to be deep and long term, and it has to address the social causes, not just the symptoms. And I think that if this town goes all in for trying to find a gun-related solution to this, it's not going to happen. But something useful that could come out of it is, is, is real action around the social causes of this, particularly in terms of the family.